Hello guys, Matsmas here with you. Hope you're having a great day. Thank you for joining me on this video on the beautiful Type 45 Destroyer Daring Class. Yes, this is a ship of the Royal Navy and one of which is very impressive. Now, once again, I am touching into the world of ships. It's not something that I'm used to. It's not something that I know much about and I'm going on my sources as best as I can. That being said, if anything is wrong about this ship overview, Please feel free to leave it in the comment section below and I will try my best to correct it for you. So just like my vehicle reviews guys, I'm going to be giving a full featurette showing exactly what the ship is all about, its specifications, its features, and then finally I'm just going to put my own opinion on it, which really doesn't mean much of anything because I'm not part of the Royal Navy, never have been, and haven't served on a ship or know much about them. However, like I said, going to go on sources as best as I can and kind of make my own kind of judgement about it. So let's get started off by learning a little bit about the Type 45 Daring Class Destroyer from the United Kingdom. So, the UK's Royal Navy Type 45 destroyers have replaced the Type 42 destroyers which were in service since 1978. Six Type 45 destroyers were contracted to be constructed and built for the Royal Navy. The requirement was for 12 vessels of the class, but the UK Ministry of Defence, as always, announced in July 2004 that this would be cut to eight, which is extremely surprising considering the Royal Navy is the most important asset of the British Isles because, at the end of the day, we're a bloody island. This was further reduced in June 2008 to six previously contracted. All of the destroyers entered service in 2013. A full-scale engineering development and initial production contract was placed on BAE Systems Marine as the Project Prime contractor. All ships were assembled and launched at BAE's Scotston Shipyard. VT Shipbuilding in Portsmouth built the bow sections, masts and funnels for all six ships. BAE Systems and VT Shipbuilding formed a joint venture, BVT Service Fleet for the design, manufacture and support of the UK surface warships in July 2008. In January 2009, VT announced its own intention to sell its holding into the BVT service fleet joint venture to BAE Systems following a UK MOD approval. In October 2009, BAE Systems acquired the VT's group's stake at 45% and renamed the entity BAE Systems Surface Ships. Production of the first ship, HMS Daring D32, began in March 2003 and it was launched on the 1st of February 2006 in Scotston. It began first stage sea trials in July 2007 which concluded in August 2007, which is to me quite quick. The five week second stage sea trials commenced in April 2008 focusing on weapon systems, radar and endurance trials. The vessel completed contractor trials in September 2008. Daring was formally handed over to the UK Ministry of Defence in December 2008. An interesting Christmas present, I might add. And the vessel arrived at a home at the Port of Portsmouth in January 2009 for further trials prior to commissioning to the Royal Navy in July 2009. Construction of the second, HMS Dauntless D33, began in August 2004 and it was launched on the 23rd of January 2007. The vessel began sea trials in November 2008 and was commissioned in June 2010. The vessel has entered service with the Royal Navy in November 2010. First steel was cut for the third, HMS Diamond or D34, in February 2005. After undergoing extensive sea trials in the Clyde River, HMS Dragon arrived in Portsmouth Naval Base and was formally handed over to the MOD in August 2011 and commissioned into the Royal Navy April 2012. HMS Defender was laid in 2006 and launched in October 2009. The UK withdrew from participation in the Tri-National Project Horizon Common New Generation Frigate or CNGF program for the UK, France and Italy and the project was terminated in October 1999. The Type 45 program gained benefit from work done on Project Horizon. For example, the PAAMS weapon system and some internal architecture of the ship were very similar. The destroyer's displacement is about 8,000 tons. The design top speed is greater than 27 knots and the range is over 7,000 nautical miles. This basically means guys that the ship can go to the other side of the Atlantic and back again on one tank of gas. The main mission of the Type 45 anti-air warfare destroyer is to provide local area fleet defence with long range radar and wide area defence capability. The ship's combat systems are also having the capability to control aircraft and coordinate anti-air warfare operations of the task force. 
the Type 45 Destroyer is equipped with a long-range weapon system to intercept air threats including very highly agile maneuvering missiles with re-attack modes. The UK PAMS defends the ship from missiles approaching individually or in salvos and is capable of controlling large number of airborne missiles simultaneously. The Type 45 can also accommodate cruise missiles such as the Tomahawk and just so you know the Tomahawk apparently is a politically incorrect name for a weapon system as the uh, certain members of the uh, US Constitution have been saying that it has to be changed. Look that up, I'm not kidding. And the anti-ballistic missiles are a requirement identified for future purposes on this ship. The Type 45 destroyer can operate helicopters up to the size of the Royal Navy Merlin helicopter but initially operates the Lynx HMA-8 helicopter armed with Stingray torpedoes for ship defense. Of course, the helicopter can also potentially have a door gunner to hunt down pirates or escort potentially troops that need to board vessels. BAE Systems Integrated Systems Technology supplied the Combat Management System, or the CMS, and the Fast Ethernet Data System for these destroyers. The Type 45 CMS integrates the PAAMMS missile system and controls all sensors and weapons. There are multiple different communication suites on this particular ship, which provide fully integrated communication systems, otherwise known as FICSs. Astrium, a joint venture of EADS and BA Systems, was awarded a contract to provide the Scott 3 satellite communication system on board the ship. Raytheon Systems supplied the integrated navigation system, which includes electronic chart display and information systems inertial navigation subsystems, and sensors including the Raytheon Pathfinder Navigation Radar. Raytheon Marine of Kiel was then the major subcontractor. RSL also supplied the identification or friend or foe or IFF systems for this ship. Northrop Grumman, formerly Litton Marine Systems, with Rockwell Automation, provided the platform management system. The primary weapon system of the Type 45 destroyer is the principal anti-aircraft missile system, otherwise known as the PAMS. The PAMS is a tri-national program involving France, Italy and the UK, and the contract series production was placed in November 2003. The missiles used for the PAMS are the Aster-15 and the Aster-30. The ship carries up to 48 Aster-15 and Aster-30 missiles. The Aster missile carries an inertial computer with data link, an active J-band Doppler radar seeker and a 15kg warhead. The speed of the Aster-30 is Mach 4 and the range is more than 80km. The missile has a maneuverability of up to 62 Gs, achieved through the use of EADS, Aerospatal, PIF guidance system, and the Aster 15 has a speed of Mach 3 with a range of up to 30 kilometers and maneuverability up to 50 Gs. The role Gs. of the Type 45 is to defend the fleet from air attack and to engage and destroy enemy targets. At the core of her operational capability is the Sea Viper weapon system. HMS Dauntless is one of six Type 45 destroyers commissioned for the Royal Navy. She's 8,000 tonnes, although the technology makes her look tiny on other ships' radars. I have a range of just over 8,000 nautical miles. That means that I can go from the United Kingdom across to New York and back again on one tank of fuel. And I have a top speed in this ship of just over 30 knots or 35 miles an hour. The Samson multifunction radar is the most advanced air defence radar in the world today. Over four tonnes of radar, 45 metres above the surface of the sea. Having that radar so high up in the ship means that our ability to track at long distances is fantastic. It gives us early warning, early detection. The Samson radar is an active phased array radar. The long range radar is a slightly different radar, more traditional, but will reach out to over 200 miles away. The heart of the ship is the combat management system. In just one console there is more computing power than was fielded in the previous destroyers. We have over 20 of those and then there's the mainframe that goes with it. It really is a privilege to be at the front end of this kind of technology. It's so powerful, it's nothing like we've had before in the Navy. As an engineer you'll be on board using the kit straight away, learning it, seeing what it's capable of and get the chance to fix it and play around and really having a good hands-on experience. The main purpose of HMS Dauntless is anti-air warfare. To do that, we're fitted with the Sea Viper missile system, 48 missiles that are capable of taking out a target up to 70 miles away from the ship. 
The Aston missile is the most advanced missile in the world. It travels at excessive speeds beyond Mach 4, which is around 3,000 miles an hour. The missile system enables me to engage a cricket ball sized target over 30 miles away, travelling at speeds of up to Mach 3. In essence, although it's called a missile, it will never miss, it will always hit. God, this video is doing so good until you said that, you mong. Really, why did you spoil it with such a stupid saying? Anyway, back to the video. Of course, it's not just about air defence in Dauntless. Phalanx is our deadly last line of defence. I'm able to fire 20mm shells at over 3,000 rounds a minute at incoming aircraft or incoming missiles. And I have two of those mounts, one either side of the ship. I also have the... 4.5 inch medium range gun on the bow. I also have a slightly smaller caliber gun, a 30 millimeter weapon. Two of them, one either side of the ship. I can embark at any one time two Lynx helicopters in the hangar, or I could embark a Merlin helicopter. Both can deliver numerous weapon systems, including anti-ship missiles, anti-submarine torpedoes, and depth charges. While the French and Italian PAMs use the Empire G-Ban radar, the UK PAMs has the BA Systems Insight Samson Multifunction Dual Face Active Array Radar operating on EF bands. Each face of the array carries up to 2,500 Gallium Arsenide Transmit and Receive modules with an output of up to 25 kilowatts. BA Systems reconfigured Samson to produce a near spherical design which retains the two rays internally. Modes of operation include long to medium range search scans, surface search, high speed horizon search and high angle attack search for tracking. Samson uses digital adaptive beam forming which makes it highly resistant to electronic countermeasures. The Samson radar completed installation on HMS Daring Foremast in April 2007 in preparation for the PAMS integration in 2008. The ships are fitted with the 140mm Mark 8 Mod 1 medium calibre gun system for shore bombardment and two 30mm guns. There is provision for the installation of two close in support weapon systems such as the Raytheon Phalanx for defence against any seaborne missiles that could potentially attack the ship. BA systems have teamed with RADMAC Defense Systems, now part of Ultra Electronics, to provide the electro optical gunfire control system for these weapon systems. Now guys, this is really effective because any ship is going to require some sort of main gun to engage in case missiles are not able to be used. Let's go old school guys, it's always nice to have a bit of firepower on your side just in case. These ships also have sophisticated countermeasures to defend themselves. They do have the outfitted DLH Active Naval Offboard Decoy System which includes the Siren Decoy, an expendable radiating decoy against radar guided missiles from BAE Systems. The ship really does power through the ocean. The Type 45 is powered by two WR-21 Advanced Cycle Gas Turbine Engines with intercool and recuperator heat exchangers which provide significant space and fuel savings for the ship. The recuperator recovers energy from exhaust gases to increase fuel efficiency also. The WR-21 is designed to deliver significantly improved operating costs due to this intercooler recuperator, but as a rule power turbines have been slowed down in warm temperatures as MPs were told of the UK government. This has not been recognised by the system which continued to demand more power. Eventually the generators will come to a halt, and this is not really the fault of the engine itself, it's more just the law of physics. MPs could really find it very difficult to understand and were stunned to find that these one billion dollar ships were becoming very useless pretty much in warmer waters. So guys there you have it, the Type 45 destroyer for the Royal Navy. Now it seems as though this ship is really serving itself quite well, um, I haven't really seen too many reports of things going wrong with it in the news, apart from the engine issues, um, but it's nice to see that the Royal Navy is being given what it needs, better ships, more updated ships, technology is advancing very quickly on the uh, naval front, it's nice to see we're actually able to keep up with uh, especially air defence, you know, having the ability to defend our uh, hopefully new aircraft carriers coming out fairly soon, it's going to be intense and these ships are obviously going to be escorting those beautiful beasts across the oceans going wherever they're needed. The Royal Navy being the leading arm of the British forces 
um, clearly needs to have a staple fleet and this is going to be one of the leading flagships towards doing so and I'm very proud to see this ship floating across the waves doing what it needs to do across the oceans far and wide. Um, clearly the radar system is very complex, very high tech. I don't personally know much about radar systems so I can't put a major opinion on that. What I will say is from what I've been researching a number of people are saying that this radar system is very very capable alongside the Aegis weapon systems that are used for, uh, or sorry, radar systems that are used for the United States fleet uh, for the US Navy. So that's really nice to see that the UK and the US are able to actually defend their fleets very well with these new radar systems and missile systems in place. Obviously with the new aircraft carriers coming out it's nice to have that protection. It's also nice to see that this ship is able to save a little bit on fuel, a fuel economy I guess isn't something you'd really think about an 8,000 ton ship weighing. Um, but it's important, you know, we don't have nuclear powered ships as of right yet in the UK for uh, these kinds of ships. So it's something that we have to bear in mind, you know, if we can make a saving here and a, and a bit of, you know, weight saving here and there, you know, it really is going to make a huge difference in getting this ship where it needs to be and continue its mission effectiveness because this ship is useless if it cannot get to a destination and that's the primary focus of ships is range. They really do need the ability to cross far and wide and get to theatres of operation that may be very far away. I think one of the other major key attributes towards this ship is the flight deck and the ability to be able to launch that helicopter on demand. Yes, it is really important to have that aircraft to be able to defend the ship and potentially hunt down pirates and other vessels that are across the oceans causing all sorts of havoc. But also guys, it's for the humanitarian aid that that aircraft can provide. Whether it be rescuing downed pilots or sailors from a ship or fishing vessels um, that are in need or delivering humanitarian aid to the um, land-based uh, supplies that are necessary. I think that's really, really important. You know, the Navy isn't always about potentially hunting down other ships or submarines or, you know, taking out pirates. There's a lot of necessary help that's needed out there that some places cannot be reached or maybe very difficult to reach that the Navy may have to go and help out with. And that uh, helicopter obviously is very key in being able to provide that. So I think that's a really big key player there along with its with its missile defense system um, and something that really gives it a top edge on, on some other ships out there that may not potentially have flight decks. Overall guys, being British, I am going to be a little biased towards this ship and I think I'm allowed to do that. But really though, when you look at the specifications and the data and the you know features of this ship, it's clear to see that this is going to be the number one defense for our aircraft carriers when they're finally built and something that is absolutely necessary to have on the fleet side for the Royal Navy. And I'm very proud to see it floating around on the ocean right now. Um, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please feel free to leave me a like and your own comments on the ship. Any of you who are part of the Royal Navy, my hat goes off to you and big respect to you all. Um, I know it must be very difficult serving on a ship away from your families and friends. So uh, thank you so much for doing your service and I really do appreciate it. If you did enjoy today's video, like I said, leave the like. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Also guys, if you are a little bored or you wish to support my account uh, slash channel, then please go check out my Patreon page. Uh, you're more than welcome welcome to make any kind of donations or support there, would be more than welcome, and thank you very much in advance if you do wish to choose down that route. Uh, once again, have a wonderful day, and bye-bye.